I don't think it's that deep. I don't, I don't think it's that deep. Sometimes, sometimes I don't think it's that deep. But some people, and it's like, especially like the way like they try to like make the joke sometimes, it's like, sometimes I don't know if you're like, if there's a part of you that actually like believes it or something like that. Not a man here who could censor me. I'm on the pier, Elohim with the energy. Uh, black boy, tell me how you really feel. I just want to build with you. It's just annoying, to be honest, it's just annoying. Like, I'm just walking and you're just like, what's up, my? And just, like, try to make a joke and like, you stop at the end, like, okay, bro, really? I'm just trying to walk to my next class. But, um, <sighs> problem, it's not really causing any harm to me. It doesn't really affect my mental, but it's just a nuisance, I guess, personally. Like no one's no one's gonna shoot me because I'm black. Well, at least that's I feel like that's a lot. That's how like my uh, generation thinks personally. I don't think we really think that we're gonna get harmed because of racism, but we know it's still there. We know it's still there. Like we know if we walk into a Dollar General with our hood on, people could look at us like we're a hoodlum or whatever. But. So let, let, let's let's unpack that. I think that's a good place to be. Um, what, why does that? Why is that a thing? Slash, what needs to happen, or does something need to happen? Just mind your business. Just chill out. Really, I mean, I don't really think anything needs to happen. I mean, like. Everyone, I feel like everyone's fine. Uh, yeah. Personally, to me, I just think just chill out, mind your business. Personally, that is, that's that's the best way to go about it. But yeah, let me ask you the question in a different way. What are some potential consequences of the what's up, my and the people when you walk into the Dollar General or the Piggly Wiggly or whatever? What, what, like looking for, like when you're doing the hypotheticals, right? What are some potential consequences, positive or negative, that could come out of those things that are like jokes or just like uh, mind your business? Is when they get too comfortable. I think, because I'm not gonna lie, I almost, I almost fought one kid because it was Black History Month and uh, he always made these like type of jokes and like I would tell him like, yo, just chill out sometimes, but like, I never did anything about it. And then like it was Black History Month and we're watching this um, movie in class and like, uh, I forgot what the movie was, but it was something, it was something about like, uh, it, it was like about black people and whatever. But um, he made some type of joke and then I was just like, yo, like, what are you doing? Like, what are you, what are you talking about right now? I, I, I literally said that in front of the whole class. I was like, what are you talking about right now? Like, why are you talking? Just listen to the movie. And then I was like, and then, yeah, I went on. He's just was quiet for the rest of the movie. And then we had watched the movie. And the teacher, like, knew he always made those type of jokes. So, like, she didn't make me go out of class for it or anything because I feel like she was getting tired of it, too. So, yeah. I think at a certain point, people will start getting tired of the jokes and then maybe there be, there could be violence in it. So yeah, that's what could happen, but. So to provide a little bit of context, um, jokes, wait, wait um, I think it was a J. Cole line, he said, all, all good jokes contain real shit or some shit like that. And in jokes, I think it was a comedian who, who made the point that a joke in a lot of ways is a dog whistle. And a dog whistle is something that it's literally a whistle that only dogs can hear because it's such a high frequency. Right. So when you say something's a dog whistle, it means that certain people get it and other people might not. So when, for instance, Trump said, make America great again. It was a dog whistle to certain people in certain groups because they understood a great America is an America that looks like us, right? Um, so 
With that being said, like there was a there was a movie back in the day, I think 30s, 20s, like way, way, way back in the day by uh, D.W. Griffith. And it was called Birth of a Nation. And the only reason I'm bringing this movie up, the, the only reason it was significant is at the time, it was like, it was the damn superhero movie at, of the time. Like they pulled out all the stops with the movie. It won a bunch of awards. They used all kinds of technology. But the movie highlighted the Ku Klux Klan. And it almost painted them like the Avengers. And what were they avenging? They were avenging white dudes in blackface, stealing and raping white women, or stealing from stores, or, or doing all kinds of criminal stuff, right? And what they later realized, or what you know, intelligent black people later realized was, movies are powerful. And that particular movie established the idea of the black man in the imagination of America. And the idea of a black man is an idea of somebody who is inherently criminal. That means you're born criminal. And who is inherently and is predisposed to do the wrong thing and is a danger to society. Now, why I bring that movie up, even though it was way, 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 way back, is that unfortunately, white people they chugged that Kool-Aid, the proverbial Kool-Aid, but black people drank it too. And now in 2022, not only do black people look at a black boy and see a criminal, uh, not only do white people, but black people also look at a black boy and see a criminal. So a lot of those jokes are actually code for how they see you. And what's interesting is because of different things that happened historically, because people only talk about slavery, because that happened way, 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 way back. But they don't talk about Jim Crow. It wasn't that long ago. They don't talk about uh, mass incarceration. It also wasn't that long ago, it's still happening today. They don't talk about redlining. And redlining was when they literally drew lines on maps and they said black people can only live here and white people can only live here. What that created is a situation now that only 80% of white people only live around other white people. 80% of black people only live around other black people. And if the popular depiction of the black person is the criminal, what do you think white people's imagination starts with when they look at you? It's a criminal. The reason that's dangerous and the reason it's important you understand that is because those jokes come from a place that's older than the person saying it. Those jokes can also be weaponized. Those jokes also result in the fact that our prisons are full of boys who look like you because they were either at the wrong place at the wrong time, they did something, or they got a cop who wasn't you know, fair and his bias skewed racist. Right. Or a judge who's bias skewed racist and something that a white boy would have done and got away with. The black boy gets his life ruined for. So what's been your experience with white boys when you're when you're going through the world, noticing how they move versus black boys? They definitely move a lot more confident. Um, they don't have to worry about much. Or this is just how I'm like, this is how I look at it. Um, I feel like even in a lot of TV shows, that's how they try to, that's how they portray it too. Like in this, uh, one show, All American, this, uh, like it was, he was a light skinned guy, but he was in Beverly, like with all the other white people and all that. So like, he didn't really have to go through any like stuff people in the hood had to do with or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And uh, this one uh, black guy, Spencer James, he was in the hood. He went to Beverly for football and he stayed with them and they were out at night um, and they were driving and he got pulled over by the cops. And like he was, uh, when I say he- um, The light skin. The light skin, yeah. He was all, uh, 
aggressive and all that and like he thought he was white yeah (laughs) right and that's not how the cop looked at him because he was light-skinned so like but then spencer like he knew he knew the situation he knew like what the cop was thinking so he he did he just complied he just didn't say much just complied and did what he had to do but he just kept like pushing it until he had to like faced the the realism of what was actually going on. So he literally put his head in his car for no reason and was about to go to jail. But then, yeah, um, the situation got handled and all that. So I think that's kind of like how white people go through life, kind of like naive. I feel like if that was a white person in that situation and like uh, the black kid wasn't even in there, like the cop would have probably like said, yeah, you're good. You can go on with your day, probably give him a ticket, maybe. But if it was a black guy, it probably would have escalated for hours for no reason. So white people do have to go through less, but I feel like black people feel like they're always having to have their guard up though. Like sometimes, I got him pulled over. I just did what I had to do. Like, it, I, I even joke with the cop. Like, I feel like even like black people, like when they're getting pulled over, they're so like defensive. Like they're so scared. That's interesting. So how do you feel about the whole conversation around, have you heard of critical race theory? Yeah. Yeah. So critical race theory is um, they want to teach kids. Um, they want to introduce to certain schools, um, the real history, because a lot of our history is whitewashed, Mm -hmm. right? So really what happened, right? Particularly when it comes to race relations, Jim Crow, the whole, the whole nine. Um, so part of the conversation is like a lot of people, people who tend to be white and Republican are saying that it's going to divide kids, right? And and we don't want the white kids feeling bad because of what grandpa and grandma did. And then some of the black people are saying, just teach them the truth. So we don't repeat the same mistakes. So what, what, what do you understand by that? And like, what, what are your thoughts as a, somebody who's, you know, in school? I think what they teach us is just like the bare minimum. I feel like we, I feel like we need to like take more initiative and like look uh, look at what actually happened more out of school. But like most people aren't going to do that. So that's why it's kind of um, the way like that's how that's why uh, black white people like know what they know because they only like uh, they don't really care honestly they just don't really care and a lot of black people don't really care too because they're like as long as it's not affecting me as long as I'm not really like um, getting hurt by anything and a, a lot of like black people that, like around my area at least aren't really getting like hurt by it so they don't really care and um, for schools though, for like people feeling bad, I, I'm not gonna lie, they do, like sometimes they do feel bad, but it's always just in class. They always feel bad in class. And then once they're out of class, it's like, they just forgot. It's like, it's, you're, you, they don't care anymore. And then they make the same jokes again, and it's just back to square one. But once we go through Black History Month again, and they start, they have that one ma- month of feeling bad, and then it's back to normal. And sometimes they don't even feel bad. They just are like, yeah, it happened. I didn't do it. I'm chilling. I'm good. So, but you don't think it's a big enough problem to address? So, like when you see people marching and when you see people protesting and all that stuff, what what are your thoughts on that as it relates to some of? Because what you're describing is called a microaggression. Mm-hmm. It's not aggressive, but it's the small little stuff. You know what I mean? So, like, what 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 are your thoughts? You, you think is it's OD, people are just too sensitive, or is there something there? I don't know, we definitely need to talk about it. Like the protests, they're definitely like good. They're definitely there for a reason. 
Um, some people that are joining the protests, I don't really like know. I feel like the protests are there. Like people are starting those because they've definitely went through stuff. They've seen it and all that. So they're like, we have to speak on this because enough people haven't seen this and all that, blah, 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 blah. And some people are just joining it because they're like, oh, I'm on your side. They don't really know what's actually going on. They're not really listening, but they're there to like support. Like swag. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's, I, I, I do think protests are definitely necessary. I mean, at least as long as you're doing it the right way. And Okay, so let's talk about that. Necessary for what and what is the right way? The uh, right way without violence. I don't really think you need to protest with violence. Um, I think violence usually comes in when it's other, peop other people like that are against the protest come in and they try to harass the people. And then it's like, once you push people like at a certain point, they're gonna retaliate. So then you get that off footage and then it's like, oh, protests are bad, but like, who started it but i mean um what was the other question though? necessary for what necessary i think it's necessary to understand like i feel like they're there to like show people like to try to make other people understand like this is still an issue it's been a couple of years but it's still an issue and we need to try to address it because i don't feel like we're actually trying to like do anything about it we're just like going along with like so what are you, what are your understanding of the what are your under what is your understanding of the issues my understanding of the issues personally i don't really know much about the issues i'm not gonna lie um do again, you think I, you should I, I definitely should i definitely should it's just the where i've where i am I don't really have to deal with much of that. So it's kind of just doing what I need to do and go to school, work. But I definitely go on social media and I see what's happening. So, you know, I see that it's not okay. Like I see there's still problems in the world, but um, I don't take the, I didn't take the initiative to actually look up what is going on for real. Do you think that's dangerous? Because it sounds like it almost sounds like the kid you described in the show, who's kind of oblivious, maybe not to the level of not yeah. knowing how to talk to cops, but oblivious as to what people are so pissed off about. Well, okay, I don't know why people are pissed off like so much, but like I understand like what's going on. Like I, 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 the comprehension I have is like, I feel like it's enough to where I can move on with society, like in society, like. Why? Because. Because you're, you're saying two things. You're saying that I don't know why people are really upset, but I understand why they're upset. It doesn't make sense. You can't not know why they're upset and claim to understand it. Can you? Can you understand something you don't know? No, but I can see. Like, if you if you if you're watching the protests, like they're definitely, you see like the emotion in it, and like it's serious, and like what they're saying. So like you know. So what are they saying? See, that's one of the critiques of your generation is that you're not plugged in, and I think it's more about the pageantry of protests than the real reason and. Um, I think it's interesting, Martin Luther King's uh, birthday passed recently. One of the things he said, he said, riots are the voice of the unheard. Meaning that when people have been deprived of a voice for so long, inevitably it leads to violence. Now, this is a man who made his own brand about nonviolence. But that's one of the things he said. When you take that initiative that you talked about to learn about the history, not only will it make you angry, right? But those things that you think are microaggressions, the what's up, man? It allows you to see it in a light that you might not have seen it before. So the question ends up being, do I prefer blissful ignorance 
or powerful consciousness. Because blissful ignorance, you could just go on and just, oh, they're just jokes. Versus when you do your due diligence, you realize that it's deeper than that. It's a lot deeper than that. And not only is it deeper than that, but it's actually, um, it affects me directly. Because especially right now, one of the leading causes of death for people your age, people my age, is homicide. And not necessarily homicide by cop, but also homicide by us. So like in certain places you might go to, you need to be conscious enough to understand you got to take that flag off. Because you might, you know what I'm saying, you might start a problem that you don't actually want. Now, the Gen Z issue is that a lot of y'all don't have the consciousness to understand the world around you and particularly how you fit into that world around you. Because you can't take off your maleness. You can't take off your blackness. And the first thing the world is going to see when you walk into 7-Eleven and Piggly Wiggly is black male, black scully, black shirt, black pants. You fit the description off top. Now, that could be very dangerous. That can be life-threatening. And as a black boy, it's important for you to understand how to move in that, how to swim with sharks. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know what a shark looks like, if you don't know how to swim, then you're going to get eaten. And I think that's the reason why um, a, lot of, um, a lot of us are so critical of Gen Z, because that goes back to your first point. Too many of y'all are oblivious and dangerously oblivious. Um, but what do you think is the, um, what do you think is the reason that white people act towards you the way that they do when they first meet you? And you could be specific to white boys, white girls, white men, white women, white old men, white old women. You could be as specific as you want. So, like, you said why? Why do they act? Because you said that they act away with you because you're a black boy. Why do you think that is? Because they know the, like, they know the stereotypes. Like, they know what people... Uh, categorize like black people as you know what I'm saying so like they they already have like a little image in their head but they're not gonna let that cloud them so they they come in a certain way but they don't fully go like that they don't fully like close themselves off what do you mean like they know they they know the stereotypes as in like uh, black people are dangerous. Uh, they shoot the gangs, blah, 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 blah. So they come in as in like scared, not scared even. I don't even know. See, kind of got me slipping. Cause honestly, when, I, when I'm like meeting with white people, honestly, they're really chilled to be honest. They're actually not like that. Beyond, they really don't come a certain way. They just. Uh, Do you they feel are. like maybe you don't see it? Like if they did, you wouldn't see it. I really don't. I really don't think they they come a certain way. They just are friendly. To be honest, they treat me like how they do with white people. Maybe that's not with every white person, but majority that I've met. Have you ever like met a white and I'm person? I'm in the south. Yeah, and you're in the south. Have you ever met a white person? Cause so the point I'm, I'm making is that there are certain things that you wouldn't notice until you have a certain consciousness. So, for instance, have you ever heard, met a certain white person and they say, you talk very well? No. See, I, I, like, you've never, those, I've never heard those, like all those like stuff that you've heard, you said you've heard or stuff like that. I've never really heard those with like people because I feel like they know like that's like that's stupid to say. Hmm, that's but, interesting. I don't know. I've never That's heard. interesting. Yeah, I mean, stuff like you, you talk very well, which means that you expect yeah. me not to. Yeah. Stuff that like you're, 
Uh, you don't act like I thought you would. Or, I've never heard that. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's very interesting. Now, what, what is your experience with black people, other black people? Um, the ones who might be angry. They're more of like the people that come in with like a certain image, to be honest. But um, uh, my experience with them is they're always like they're always like friendly with other black people. Of course, like they're they're never like a certain way. Like oh, they actually they feel more comfortable. Definitely feel more comfortable with other black people. What white people they they act a certain way. Like you kind of see it switch a little bit, like when you're hanging out with them, like by yourself. And then like when they're with other white people, they're like kind of more like try to be a little more proper, but like tr still try to like um, keep their um, comfortableness or whatever. But um, why? Why do you think they do that? Because they know like we're not we don't we know like what's happened. So they do you? Because you just said you didn't. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, they. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of oblivious to it. But a lot of people that I know that are like, that go um, to white people, like, in a certain way, they know, like, they've done their research and all that. So they um, are conscious of the fact that they may look at them a certain way. So they try to, like, act um, how they may want them to act. So... That's kind of my experience with black people. So with the, with the white boys who make the jokes, um, do you think it's a big problem or it's not a big problem? Or it's not that deep? I Is it, it that deep or it's not that deep pretty much? I wish it would stop, but I don't think it's that deep. I don't, I don't think it's that deep. Sometimes, sometimes I don't think it's that deep. But some people, and it's like, especially like the way like they try to like make the joke sometimes, it's like, sometimes I don't know if you're like, if there's a part of you that actually like believes it or something like that. Cause like some, some, uh, <laughs> this one kid at my school like took a picture with like, it was at a basketball game um, with like the two black kids on our basketball team with the ski mask on, just, just trying to like, I don't know. It was like, why though? But then again, they also would do that with their white friends. So then I'm just like, are you doing it because they're black or are you just doing it because you're, that's just the way you are? It's both. Um, to a lot of black kids, especially the young ones, um, blackness is a joke. <clears throat> blackness is something to be played with. It's a costume. Right. And that is one of the issues I, I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand. It's a it's a joke to them. And it's a joke that in a way insinuates that your life is a joke. Y'all are just characters that we can play. And, you know, because one of the big things that happens is um, in colleges, some fraternities and sororities do like blackface parties. Right. So white kids. Just like you said, didn't own slaves, didn't, you know, uh, necessarily lynch anybody, but they not only benefit from a benefit from a legacy of that, like their great grandfather did lynch somebody, right? But their grandfather sometimes. Um, they are also playing with that. Like imagine you saw Jimmy, right? And you know that Jimmy's grandfather <clears throat> killed your grandfather. And you've heard the story of how it happened. And then Jimmy walks up to you and says, what's up, man? Might that hit a little different? Or is it not that deep? No, it will. definitely would. It is that deep is the point I'm making. Because a lot of these things we're talking about weren't that long ago. Slavery was a long time ago. But the fallout of um, slavery and everything that came out of it was not that long ago, right? Um, 
you know, people, people, you've heard of Emmett Till, right? Emmett Till? Yeah. Yeah, Emmett Till could have still been alive today. He was just, he'd been an old guy, but he'd been alive, right? When you see a lot of the pictures, like the black and white pictures of protesters and being hosed by, uh, hosed and the dog sicked on them and with the people in the um, cafeteria spitting on them and stuff like that. If you do the math, those people are like in their 60s, 70s, 80s. They're alive. So the point I'm trying to get you to understand is it is that deep. They know those people. We live in South Carolina. Some of these kids, the was up my kid, his uncle's in the KKK. And he goes with them to the meetings for them to strategize about how to, you know, reestablish the Aryan race and, and you know, resegregate black people and kill black people and things like that. So it is that deep. And I know it's easy sometimes to think, oh, he's just naive. He just, you know, just watching TV. And that's why he is like that. But it's, in, it's informed by centuries of history. And to not know that history, but claim to understand it is dangerous. Very, very dangerous for you, especially as a black boy. Because there's a lot of context you miss. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that if you knew better, you could identify all oh, shit. This shit is about to go left that if you don't know better, it's just uh, so under, because, you know, when you when you study history and the thing that I appreciate about history so much is that you realize that time is cyclical it's a cycle. Um, and that's why it's so important. If you don't learn from your mistakes, you're bound to repeat them. Right. And as a country, America hasn't learned from its mistakes. And they're breeding the same personality in these white kids that leads to supremacy. So what I'm asking you to do as a black boy, as a black young person, is think further. What can that, what's up my, become? What if that kid becomes a judge? What if that kid becomes a police officer? What if that kid is, is the school teacher for your kid? It was said my kid could become your kid's school teacher. It's deep. It's really deep.